Hi, today's lecture is about the different blood types. If you took a sample of blood from an individual and ran it through a centrifuge machine, you would be able to separate the blood into different compartments based on the density of the molecules. Here we have a diagram where the blood is separated, is gone through a centrifuge machine. And the first compartment at the top you see is made up of blood plasma. And that makes up about 55% of the total volume. And what you find in blood plasma levels is nutrients, salts, which are primarily your electrolytes, sodium, chloride, potassium. Uh, you'll also find waste, gases, and proteins. Some of the important proteins that you find in plasma are the albumin molecules, which are very important for osmotic pressure, fibrinogen, which is involved with clotting factors, and the globulins, which are very important for the immune system. Now, the next compartment here that you see is less than 1%, and that is made up of the white blood cells and platelets. Platelets are involved with blood clotting, so to make sure you don't bleed out when you do have a cut. And the white blood cells are very important for the immune system, and they make up the neutrophils, lymphocytes, eosinophils, monocytes, and basophils. We'll talk about those later in another chapter. And the last compartment here is the RBCs, which make up 45%. These are the red blood cells, also called erythrocytes. Erythrocytes have a lifespan of 120 days, roughly three months. And after that, they kind of wear down and die off, and new ones are produced by the bone marrow. Now let's jump into our blood types. We have four blood types in our body. Blood type A, B, AB, and O. Now, the first thing you have to understand about blood types is the antigens. Antigens are surface markers of the RBCs. Basically, they're, they're your identity tags, and they're found on the surface of the red blood cell membranes. And whatever surface antigen you have, that determines your blood type. So antigens were determined first and then gave rise to the names. So... Here we have blood type A giving rise to antigen A. So antigen A, you can see those blue dots. Those are the surface antigens. And antigen A gives rise to the name A blood type. So you can never forget the blood types. If you, you know, know the alphabet, you should be able to figure out the antigens and blood types pretty fast. They're the same. So B blood type would have B antigens on the surface, giving its name. And AB blood type would have antigen A and antigen B. So they would have both blood antigens and hence the name AB. And O is unique a little bit because it's almost like the letter 0 or O. They have no antigens. Now, the second thing you have to learn about blood typing is, or blood types, is the antibodies. Antibodies are part of your immune system, but they're designed just to kill antigens, RBC antigens. And it's unique because here you have an individual with antigen A, and you have the opposite antibody, B, meaning this antibody is designed to kill B antigens. It's always the opposite. So it's almost like this individual knew there's a B type person out there. He doesn't want B blood in him. So his body has preformed antibody Bs against surface antigen B. So don't ever put B blood type in somebody with A blood. So just to emphasize that again, antibody B is designed to kill B antigens. So if you have B blood type, you know you're going to have the opposite antibody because you don't want to kill yourself. So this one would be antibody A. And antibody A is looking to kill A antigens or A blood. So don't ever put A blood. As long as A blood doesn't come in contact with somebody with B blood, you're perfectly fine. So Next one is AB blood type. It has A antigens and B antigens. So you know this is going to be a little bit tricky now. 
This one has no antibodies because you have both antigens. You can't have antibody A or antibody B because you would partly kill the RBC. So this one has no antibodies. All right, the last one, you have no antigens for blood type O. And this one, for this individual, he actually has both antibodies, A and antibody B. Now, looking at this chart real quick, just I want to focus on AB real quick. Just a little hint. When you see that there's no antibodies present in this blood type, you know you can pretty much put anything you want in somebody with AB blood because there's nothing in his system that's preformed as far as antibodies go. So they're not going to attack any other blood type. So sometimes if you know your AB, you can pretty much receive any blood that's out there. Even if they come out with a new blood type tomorrow, uh, blood type D or Z or G, you know, you could blindly give it to this individual because you know there's no antibodies that are going to attack it. All right, let's give you an example. Here's a blood transfusion reaction. This is blood type A. So we know blood type A is based on the antigens they have, antigen A. And we know the antibodies that are present in this person are antibody Bs. And antibody Bs' primary job is to kill B antigens. So let's just happen to give this person, this blood vessel, and donate blood type B, which are antigen Bs. If we inject this into this blood vessel, we know that this antibody B is going to attack those surface antigens because that's his primary job. And that is going to create a clotting reaction or agglutination reaction, which is going to coagulate the blood. And that's going to be a big mess and very detrimental to somebody's health. And this is what we call a transfusion reaction. This is why it's very important to do uh, blood typing uh, before you donate or receive blood. All right, let's summarize what we've learned on this chart. Uh, the first on, on the left here, we have the different blood types. We know blood types are based on antigens that you have. So antigen A gives us blood type A. Antigen B gives us blood type B. Antigen A, antigen B gives us blood type AB. And there's no antigens for blood O. So call it blood O. The next thing is the antibodies, which are the opposite of the antigens. So if you have antigen A, you have antibody B. I just abbreviated antibody AB. And the letter B is the actual antibody. So antibodies B are looking to kill B antigens. So here we're safe in this individual. So somebody with B blood type would have A antibodies. And somebody with A, B antigens would have no antibodies, meaning anything you put in this person is safe because there's nothing that's going to hurt or harm you. Uh, somebody with blood O that has no antigens has both antibodies. So this is one part of the chart you just have to memorize. If you can understand it, that's great. But you can't get anywhere in this chapter or in blood typing if you don't memorize the blood antigens and the blood antibodies. Now let's talk about who can donate and who can receive what blood. So here we have a person with blood type A with B antibodies. He, and when you want to donate this blood, just remember when you donate blood to another individual, you're only giving them the packed RBCs. The antibodies are filtered out and they're only receiving the antigens, the RBCs. So if I pluck this RBC out, and I just happen to put it down here, if you can visualize in this block, if I put this here, you know this antibody A is going to go and attack that antigen. So that's not going to work. So if I take this and put it down here, okay, there's no antibodies here, so I know I can put antigen A down here in somebody with AB blood. And if I take this and I try to put it down here, that's not going to work because antibody A is going to kill the antigen A. So the only people that I can donate blood A is to itself and AB. Hope that makes sense. So let's see if you can figure out who can 
B can donate to who? It's going to be itself and, again, AB, because AB has no antibodies. You can always donate to yourself. So who can AB donate to? Remember, when you're donating AB, you're only taking this RBC with this antigen A and antigen B. So if I put this guy here, this anti antibody B is going to attack that half. If I put this over here, this antibody A from B blood is going to attack that half. I can give it to itself. Uh, if I take this AB and put it down here, these both antibodies are going to attack both antigens. So that's going to be the worst transfusion reaction if I put AB and O. So the only person you can donate AB blood to is itself. All right, let's donate O blood. O blood has no antigens. Remember, we're not taking this with it. So I'm going to put this with O and no antigens. Doesn't matter what antibodies we have. They're not going to attack anything on this because there's no surface markers or antigens. So I can donate O to any individual. It's called the universal donor. Even if there's a new blood out there, I can just blindly give that to that individual or O to an individual and won't have to worry about uh, much of anything. All right, what about receiving blood? Now, when you're receiving blood, here's blood A. You have to worry about these antibodies now. So if I uh, have to worry about these, then it makes it a little bit more complicated. So we know you can put A blood in him itself, and we know there's no antigens here, so we can put O over here because the antibody B is not going to do anything to O. For B blood, we can do B itself and O. Now, receiving blood, what can we put in him? Look, he has no antibody, so I can get anything I want into this individual. So he's going to be able to receive everything. He's called the universal recipient. He's very stingy because he only gives himself or another individual with AB blood, but he can receive any blood that's out there, even a new one if they create a new species. Because there's no antibodies to attack anything. And blood O can only receive O because he has both antibodies. So you can't put anything you want in here. I hope that helped. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.